Welcome to today's Fast Track episode of The Growth Zone. My name is Christian Bartsch and these episodes provide you with a focused mind-feeding topic. You can use it to have some new ideas to guide you through the day. Let's get started on today's topic. In this episode, we are going to look at how to use marketing to extend your customer lifetime. So these fast track editions are intended to be short and precise and focusing one area. And that's why today marketing uh, and your customer lifetime. So the thing is, when you gain a new customer, you want eventually to turn them into a client. And that means actually somebody who is going to buy from you several times, whether it's within a week, when it's a month, when years. For instance, somebody who buys a car, they might buy every five years a new car or every 10 years or every 15 years. It doesn't matter. But if you manage that they buy from you several cars, let's say they, they leave school, they have a job, save up for money, buy the first car, buy the third car, fifth car, and so on and so on, as they go. Eventually, they go into retirement. They maybe invest in a big luxury car from your brand. If you manage to hold their loyalty for all that time, and it's maybe the last car they're going to buy, then uh, you have a chance there even making good profit at that time because you have maybe sold to them in their lifetime three, four, five, ten, 20 cars even, it could be. Or for instance, you've got a business owner as a customer. And if he buys for all his people, your car, uh, your brand, your cars, then you can sell maybe 20, 30, 50 cars or so. Like just look look at, for instance, Nicola. Nicola has uh, producing trucks, electric trucks, trucks with hydrogen. And they've got already from a large American brewery an order for I think it's 800 vehicles. Fantastic. Exactly what you need to expand your business and fund as well a full production line. On the other hand, yeah, but marketing to extend your customer lifetime, lifetime, that means so people who've already bought. So it's not just about upselling them, but it's about keeping them happy, keeping them up to date with what you're offering and maybe building a relationship long-lasting relationship that goes beyond the experience of having bought that product because it would be the same thing if you if you are selling for instance uh chewing gum and so on yeah once they've chewed it and thrown away in the bin then it's gone but um if you get them to buy a second packet let's say they're buying it for for flying somewhere and they need to reduce the pressure in the ears then they'll use the chewing gum and it helps them to reduce the pressure in the ears. But if they're returning back and they didn't have an experience that was positive, they might go and try a different brand because they somehow didn't like the flavor or whatever. And that's when you maybe lose the customer. If you're actually able to get them to buy again and again and again, that's good. And if you look at the example of a high-value product, whether it's an expensive vacuum cleaner, like for instance, a Dyson vacuum cleaner, they are usually cost more than the other standard brands, but it can clean in a much more proficient way. They're noisier, but I definitely prefer them because it's clean and it really does a good work. And the same thing if you are focused on you like driving a certain brand or you like uh, eating certain food or you like... um, any kind of other produce, consumable or product, physical product, yeah, or you like flying with a certain airline and you're always passionate about that airline, then that's good for the airline because it means even after the pandemic, you will most likely fly again with them. And you're just getting uh, ready to be back in the aircraft. So you have to think about it. How do I use marketing to extend the customer lifetime. I have to build rapport with them. I have to provide value, provide information that's useful, not just about me, me, me and buy my stuff and buy my stuff. 
that's that's not only boring but it doesn't really help me anything because if you are let's say you're providing uh, security equipment um or oil testing equipment and you're telling me that you're the best okay but uh, prove it to me first yeah you maybe you can do a comparison or maybe you can go and say hey our products are easy to use now with a new feature and you show it in a video and i see oh that's much easier because usually when i use it it just does i don't like the smell but i have to do it and if you then have that testing tool and it's much easier to use so you can even uh, have a better way of testing whether there's too much liquid in the in the fuel of the aircraft it's of course a big advantage compared to conventional testing methods especially when you have a small aircraft and that's where you can of course provide value on the other hand you can show as well how you can use products or in general increase the safety of your of your aircraft without actually directly relating it to your products just providing intern interesting information useful information maybe in, in checklists and all sorts of other things there's so many things that you can do as a business and it doesn't automatically mean that it's just for airlines just for aircraft manufacturers or automotive companies who produce cars or accessories for cars and so on or smartphone producers it doesn't matter it can be any industry you are a plumbing company you produce uh, pipes and so on for household for any kind of things or you are a dishwasher manufacturer uh, pff, doesn't matter there are multiple opportunities for you to build rapport with the clients and the key thing is you get the contact with them and you build the information that's worth for them to actually keep reading it because if your newsletter is boring me and it's not providing any real value for me that's useful i'm not going to keep it i'll unsubscribe because there's nothing in for me there, there isn't really the value that i'm going to take the time to read the newsletter or even just to take the time to read the document re listen to the audio or watch the video if there's no value for me why should i and that's the key thing look at that you have to provide value to your customers in the marketing and it's not just about producing one thing you have to produce multiple things that are targeted at what your customers really need what their key product problems are and what's happening in their context as an example let's say you are a manufacturing company you manufacture equipment for manufacturing then you could go and tell your customers what uh, other special accessories you're offering and how you can apply them and uh, if you do this and that even that doesn't need your product you can even improve the security the safety of the product maybe the efficiency maybe even the cost of using the machine and that's already something simple that is of value and the people who you are addressing to will like it so take the time think about it try to uh, take a white paper and write down what's important for your customer what are their pain points what is their situation what are they having to handle now and what do they handle usually before and after a pandemic what is their usual situation and then try to map that out the best thing is you use as well then afterwards a mind map there are these uh, as well open source mind maps that you can install on windows on mac on linux it doesn't matter whatever you use you can use that or you can use a commercial product and then map that out and try to go more and more detail and eventually you'll find opportunities for good content and that's the key thing that you have to do in order to make sense of the whole thing otherwise you're just going in circles and there's nothing really there for people so take the time use that and think about it i hope you enjoyed the fast track edition of today i would like to invite you to follow our show so that you don't miss the upcoming interviews with leaders in the market simply visit the website follow.prmediareach.com 
I will be adding the link also to the description of this episode so that you just need to click on that link. The link is follow.prmediareach.com follow.prmediareach.com You can follow me also on Twitter by using the Twitter handle C-A-P-Barch. So it's spelled C-A-P-B-A-R-T-S-C-H. Or for those who are into sailing and uh, flying, Charlie Alpha Papa Bravo Alpha Romeo Tango Sierra Charlie Hotel. Yes, that's C-A-P Barge. See you soon or hear you soon in the next episode. And please share as well this episode if you've enjoyed it and would like to let others have the opportunity to use that as well to get new ideas and insights. 